just realized uh, while listening to her that you don't have to be a mother to speak here. So you just need to have a mother in your life. Then you can tell a lot of things about your mother, right? And learn a lot of things from mother. So, happy Mother's Day, first of all, to all of you who are mothers. Can I see the hands of all the mothers here? Awesome. Huh? <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Right. Thank you, Helen. Now, if you saw this morning, you woke up early, uh, you probably saw dew on the ground or on your cars that are parked outside or on the roofs. I was surprised because I walked out and it was like uh, part of the ground was wet. And this is the desert, isn't it? <laughs> and I was surprised because I was thinking maybe this turned out to be California after all. But it's not, it's Mojave Desert. So, and I was looking at the cars and there was lots of dew on the cars uh, parked outside. And I went to the garden where I usually go on Sunday morning and the seats were wet and so I could sit down and you know, talk to God. So I walked around uh, and found, I found a, uh, you know one of those long seats uh, that they use near the swimming pool? Yeah, I found one of them was, had been under the sun for a while and so it was dry and I was able to sit there. But one thing I realized today and God spoke to me. Now, please realize that when God speaks to me, I don't hear a voice. Okay, people ask me that. Do you hear a voice? Do you hear an audible voice? And I say, no, 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 don't get me wrong. I don't hear an audible voice. I'm not schizophrenic. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> um, but I hear these thoughts. Okay, these thoughts that come like a thought in your head and you know it's not yours because the thought pattern is different. I know how I think and I know when I'm not the one who's thinking. <laughs> and, I, and my wife knows when I'm not thinking. <clears throat> so, I hear, I hear this thought from the Lord and He says, the dew and the rain falls on both the wicked and the righteous. Now I remember the scripture that says that. You know, wherever you go, you know, the rain falls on both the farm of those of the wicked and the farms of those who are righteous. The sun shines on everyone regardless. Right? Whether you're wicked or you're righteous. And I know that you get all, all of you here are righteous in Christ. So, it's the blessings of God comes upon every one of us. And I know that some people that I've talked to, and I know that you have talked to these people also, who call the earth Mother Earth. Right? Now, the earth is not our mother because the earth did not give birth to us. Although Adam was taken from the ground. But the point is that we are nurtured and nourished by what we get from this earth. And if we destroy this earth, we'll end up with, you know, catastrophe, devastation. Um, and we seem to be having that now because of global uh, climate change. Now, there was a book that came out uh, several years ago. I think it was back in 2008 or 2007 called The Shack. Any one of you have read the book? Okay, a few. Have you heard of The Shack? You've heard of The Shack. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of controversy over this book and I'll tell you why if you haven't heard yet. In this particular book, now some of you have probably seen or read um, the Narnia Chronicles. Right? Who's the author of those books? C.S. Lewis. Lewis, right? And some of the portrayals there, the pictures, the imagery is sometimes unbiblical. How many of you have seen The Fellowship of the Ring? 
know, some of you, or some of you have heard or read the, the book. And when you look at the Fellowship of the Ring, this was written by, um, I think, a Christian author. And some of the imagery and some of the um, pictures there are totally out of this world. And some people would say, some Christians would say, it's totally de demonic. All right? The shack has been controversial because God is portrayed in three persons. Now we believe the Trinity, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, God the Father is portrayed as a woman in the book. In fact, he's portrayed as an African-American woman. Then, uh, Jesus, the Son, is portrayed as a Middle Eastern carpenter. And then, the Holy Spirit is portrayed as an Asian woman. And then, the, um, the relationship between the three, that's the part that's biblical. But, the portrayals are so totally unbiblical for a lot of Christians. And so that's why there's a big controversy over that. Okay? Now, is God a mother? Some say yes. What would you say? Who says God is only a father? There's no one saying anything. Who says God is only a mother? Who says God is both? Okay, good. I can sit down. You can yes. But let's look at the scripture here. Let's turn to Isaiah 42, verse 14. For a long time, this is this is God speaking. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out. I gasp. And pan. How many of you have given birth to children? At least a child. Okay, thank you, Jason. <laughs> uh, you know how it feels. I don't know how it feels. Can I get my water? You don't, you know, a, a man can't know, cannot know how it feels like to give birth. Right, Aaron? See, thank you, my wife is here. I'm going to ask her to speak. <laughs> it takes a woman to understand this. A man can only try to imagine it, but just to and My wife came and spent 16 hours in labor, our first child. I don't know what that feels like. I don't know what it feels like when the child starts pressing into, you know, where that is. Right? It starts pressing there, wants to get out, or trying to get out. Or it, I call it a dry run. You know, three months before it starts to press, right? And I just told my daughter-in-law, that's a dry run. He, our, our future grandchild, uh, is our granddaughter, is trying to press down now. So she's in her um, third trimester. So she'll probably give birth sometime around July. Isaiah 66, verse 13. As a mother, now this again, it's God saying, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Now here is God, and he is portraying himself, showing himself in an imagery, in a figure of speech. I'm a mother. Now it sounds unbiblical and it sounds like heresy. Some, some Christians say it's a heresy. But no, God is, in one way, a mother. Now think about this. How did God give you all the attributes of a mother? Where did it come from? It came from Him, right? So, how can I give you something I don't have? God has, had, has to have 
those attributes in order for him to give that to you. And same way, the attributes he gives to us as fathers, those of us who are fathers or men, that comes from him. So he has to have all those attributes in order to give that to the men. So with the women, right? Isaiah, no, Matthew 23, verse 37. This is Jesus speaking. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. As Jesus, using an imagery of a mother hen, and he says, I'm the one who wants to gather you, and yet you're not willing. Amazing, isn't it? And last here, Isaiah 49, verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Who says yes? Some of them, that's right. Yes. But the majority of mothers? Now why is it that the majority of mothers cannot forget their child? Even if the child has become an evil person. I'm sorry? You still have that love, right? How many months did you carry your child? And you say, oh, you turned out to be a different kind of kid that I want. So, hey, get out of this house. You're 18, kick you out. But women? <laughs> oh, please don't kick my child out. I want him. I still love him. You know, they show up at your door after 25 years and says, Mom, I'm finally home. What, what do you do? Open the door, right? Cook a meal. Give it some water. So what are you doing now? I'm homeless. Come stay with me. Still your baby. Right? They will never be not your child. They will never be not your child. That's how women look at their children. See, the unconditional love of God comes from that part. See, somehow God poured out a, an overwhelming portion of His unconditional love on women. On women. That's why they understand unconditional love more than men do. And that's probably why the story about the prodigal son, God chose to have a father. Because fathers don't seem to have that. And yet God says, in this particular verse, He says, Though she may forget, I will never forget you. I will never forget you. See, God cannot deny Himself. God cannot turn His back on you. You are His child, regardless. Whether you turn evil or not, you are His child. And I think that's one of the things that we need to um, work on as the body of Christ is because we turn God to be someone who's like light and darkness. Uh, if you look at the flag of Korea, it's round. There's a portion that's white. There's a portion that's black. Some of you know what that's called? Huh? Yin yang. Right? The, the, the concept of yin yang is light cannot exist without darkness. Now, is God light and darkness? Or is He pure light? He is pure light. There is no darkness in Him. That's written in the scriptures. 
There is no shadow in Him. It's pure light. Now, is there shadow in the sun? The sun, that, you know, the sun that makes our earth bright in the daytime. Well, the sun may cast a shadow if there's an object, but the sun itself doesn't have a shadow. It cannot have a shadow. And same way with God. God is not light and darkness. He is only light. And when He gives to you unconditional love, it is total, un totally unconditional. So look at the person next to you and say, totally unconditional. And then turn to the person next to you and tell them, God really loves you. I have this story to tell. This is going to be short. But I would rather have my wife tell that story. Can you come and tell your story about the being in the womb? <laughs> this is short. It's a short one. I forced her. I, I, I couldn't tell her before because, because otherwise she'll, you know, she'll freeze and then, and then have a headache. She had a headache two days ago. She told me, I, I'm having a headache. I can't figure out whether to, give it, uh, to think about my case study for chaplaincy or you know, think about the message. So can you please be the one to speak? I said, just for your sake, yes. <laughs> Just a story about how um, you know that part where you found yourself. Okay. Um, uh, growing up. Oops. Uh, 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 while I was growing up, um, I feel like my father loves me, and he would take me uh, fishing every afternoon after school. So that's how I know that my father loves me, even if he would whip me. <laughs> there's, not, there's like a, a light and a darkness. <laughs> he loves me, but he would whip me. <laughs> but I know that my father loves me because of that, you know, having, you know, he would take me fishing, and I love fishing, and, um, but my mom, when I would skin my knees, it's like, she's like, when I go home, she would pinch me, like, pinch me everywhere. It's, it's, it hurts, you know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you have been pinched by your mom, but it hurts. <laughs> and uh, growing up, I thought that my father loves me, but my mom, I feel like she hates me because uh, instead of you know comforting comforting me when I need her, she would she would uh, whip me or pinch me, and so that has been like a question growing up. Why is it that she's like she hates me? And um, I know my, my older brother is one year, we have a one year gap. Like she, he was born 1960, February 1960, and I was born March 1961. So that has been a question. We have one year gap. I probably have, like I was not planned. So I, I was uh, always praying, Lord, why is it that my mom doesn't like me? She hates me. And then uh, in prayer, all of a sudden, I feel like, like it's like a, a vision where I am in my mother's womb. I feel like it's, it's dark. And why, why, is it, why is it dark, Lord? And I realized that I am in my mother's womb. And... Uh, God began to speak to me that you are not 
you are not an accident because I feel like I'm an accident that I was not planned so that's why my mother hates me or doesn't like me because I was not planned so um, God the Father began to tell me that you are not an accident that I have formed you that I have uh, planned you and that the day that I was born that's at exactly the time that God planned me to be born. So the, the, the emptiness and the, the question and the feeling of rejection by my mom has been healed. So after that, we began to have like a loving relationship with my mom and like there was a healing between our relationship. That God is a mother to us. He's not just a father, but He's a mother. And um, really, God doesn't have a gender. The Bible does say that He is Father. But really, there is no gender when we're talking about non-physical, spiritual things. Right? God doesn't have a gender, but He has all the qualities that He gives to each one of us. He has all the good qualities. That's one thing about God. Um, 